I know that's a heavy topic, but we have to speak about it. And you know, I didn't know how how this was going to be received, and you may not want me to speak anymore after this. But all those songs today was relevant. Mark's prayer today was relevant. And we need to talk about heaven because what's the point of what we're doing here each and every day? If we're going through emotions, then we will, we will be left. So I'm gonna try my best to um, get you through some of this stuff here <laughs> that's relevant for our lives. Uh, the first scripture I wanna read is from 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not perceive those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Uh, four reasons for learning about heaven. That's what I want to hit you with first. First one is we won't have misconceptions about heaven. The second, God commands us to. Third, it will inspire us to live for God. Fourthly, it will take away our fear of death. All right, so when we go back into Colossians, it's one of the first scriptures that was there. It says, since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. We have to set our sights on the realities of heaven and think on the things of heaven. God is not suggesting that we set our minds on heaven. He's commanding that we do because that's how he's bringing us back to him. Why should heaven be the focal point of our lives? First, when making heaven a focal point of my life, more than the things on earth, it gives me eternal perspective, it changes my perspective, my will, and my priorities. As long as I'm thinking and my mind is always set on heaven, I am always ready to be prepared to make it. That is the most important piece is we have to make it. I have so many loved ones and friends that don't believe that part. And if we come here weekly, we go to Bible studies, we pray, and we don't apply, because we're saying that we trust and believe God's word. We can't say that some of God's word is true and some of God's word is not. It's an uncomfortable feeling, but we have to address it. We have to be able to apply it so we're living in God's will. It's how we respond to things that we go through is what's gonna set our peace for our eternal resting place, okay? So we know that if we don't make it there, there's only under one other place. There's no in between. So 2 Corinthians 4, 16 and 18 says, therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Outwardly, our bodies, 
we're getting older, we're feeling pains. Inwardly, if we continue to feed on God's word, we're renewing our minds daily. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that out far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what's, what is seen, but on what is unseen. Heaven, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. What we see today and what we deal with on a daily basis is temporary. We might live and be have the opportunity to grow old, but it's still temporary. We should be basing our lives on what's eternal. Okay, we live in this world, but this is not our home. And you've heard me say this plenty of times. So when I start to move into the timeline, has anyone ever seen this or, or had a discussion about this at first? The first thing I would ask is, what is the first coming of Christ? It's a question. We could say it's Christmas, but we say the birth of Christ, right? That's, that's how we, we, we know that was the first. So where are we living in this time chart right now? We're in the church age. Okay? So I'm following what the word is, and I know everybody has a different view of it, and I'm going to go through some of those as well. But there's a point where God is going to pour down his wrath. And we've seen, we, we talk about this and say, we don't want to know about this. But he's done it over and over and over throughout the, the, the word of God. And we study this. We love to hear the Bible stories. It's just that now we're living in a time that we still have to address. The timeline is, is, is coming in. So the purpose of the tribulation time, when we're taken away, the church, right, is aimed at Israel. And the church is said to be delivered by this point. So when can the rapture occur? Does anybody know that answer? Only God knows that. Only God knows. I don't know who said that. That was the right answer. Yes, John. That was the right answer. So when I was a child, I remember a pastor, and I used to preach this all the time. They had a different view of and, and way how they did it. It wasn't done in love. But I remember him saying one day, I know when Jesus is coming back. The Lord told me. Now, one, we don't want to follow anybody that's saying that they know. But I was so sure that he seemed positive about it. And everything was just quiet. And he said, do you want me to tell you? And everybody said, yes. Right? So we can do what we got to do and get ready to be when he comes. He says, when he's good and ready. It scared the mess out of me. I was like, that's not a good answer. Right? So, so I want to move forward because I'll come back to that piece. 2 Peter 3. 13 through 14 says, but in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. So then, dear brothers, dear friends, I'm sorry, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. That is very hard to live in this day and time to live spotless, blameless, and to, to feel like we have peace. The reality of our world today, it is very hard. That's a fact. Because we will be tested through these things. But what does God tell us to do? To trust them. Everything that we are supposed to do. The song knocking on heaven's door. That was a song in a movie initially, right? And and um, and it was based around death, of course. And, but but it's, if you listen to that part there, all of us are. Because at any moment, we can either be taken away or lose our lives here. At any moment. So every day we should be looking at that promise to say, and that's how we should live our life. Do I want, if I die right now, am I ready? If the Lord came right now, because you don't have to believe it, but if that happened, those young people that did that video, I thought I was very impressed that they were young and they did it, but those young people that did that video, 
if we were sitting right here and, and that trump of God sounded, because that might be our only warning, and then it's too late, and half of us are gone. I hope I'm not still here, preaching this message, right? But half of us are gone. I'm not going to tell you that you can't make it after that, but I'm going to tell you this one. If you think life is hard now, it's getting ready to move into a different direction. And, 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 I, and it's not me prophesying or saying anything. I'm telling you that the word of God has prepared us for this time. And we are seeing all these things unfold. This is not the time to have fear. This is not the time to put our trust in the government and all the politics and stuff that come on. We should be looking at God. Keeping our minds on heaven. Anybody that gets up in front of you and they, they start to talk about, well, the world is this, and we need to do this. I don't want to get into all of that. I'm telling you that I always say, let's pause. I believe in God and the Word, and I can tell you that everything that happens and going to happen has to happen. It has already been said. Matthew 6, uh, 19, 20, do not store up yourselves treasures in, on earth where moths and vermin destroy, and where the thieves break in and steal. But store up yourselves treasures in heaven. I'm sorry, I read it wrong, treasures on earth, right? And But store up your treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. What is that saying to us? Yes, God's promises overtakes anything. I don't know where that's coming from. I think Mike left his, his phone. Yeah, so he's going to have to come back. I'll pass this to you in case that happens again. Yeah? Praise God. All right. Yes. Are you storing up your treasures in heaven? How about asking that question to yourself? I want you to think about that just to, to momentarily. I'm going to move to the next slide. Are you storing up your treasures in heaven? What's our treasures that we should be storing up? What do you think it is? Is it money? Raise your hand if you think it's money. All right? Is it um, our homes? What about the person that, that sells a lot of homes and, 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 and it always goes back into material, right? Our vehicles. What about our clothes? What about our musicianship? Okay, now each of those, with the exception of clothes, unless we're blessing people with clothes, that's how we store our treasures in heaven. If we're using it for God's glory, our talents, all right? The real world, we have to work here, right? It doesn't say that, oh, because you play guitar at the bar, you, you're not serving God. That's a choice, right? But it doesn't mean that you still can't represent God. Right? Everywhere we are, there should be a light in us. People don't just see just the talent. I can tell you in some of the people that I've known, they don't just see the talent, they see something special and glorious in you. Right? So then you start to try to determine, well, what is it about that individual? And if you ask them, they just may tell you, I found God. Right? Because remember, I've said this before. We may be the only Jesus that many people see. And we have to be an example for him. So, the rapture of the second coming. Does anybody know this big misconception on what, what, what that is? Has anybody heard the debate on it or, or uh, know that, that there is a difference? So, if we believe in rapture or they're taken away, what happens there? Christ returns to his church. Does he come down to get us? Does anybody know that answer? Yes, we're called to meet him in the air. So what's the difference of the second coming? We come back, <laughs> we come back with him. So, so it's, let me tell you, it's an amazing story. It's not gloom. It's an amazing, if you think about it. We, God has to have his judgment across here because evil has done a lot of bad things. Have, st have stolen a lot of things from, from what the world is, has, has um, um, manipulated Adam and Eve from the very beginning. 
So God is going to, 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 to recover that, but he's going to say, for those that are faithful. So I'm going to go into some of this here. So what is the rapture? Rapture is derived, derived, derived from the Latin translation in Thessalonians 4, 17, which we read, which translates the Greek, Greek harpozo, to catch up or carry away. All right? 17, when, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with with the dead in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more and explain it. I want to get finished up with her puzzle. Uh, it, it can be, it can mean to carry off by force. Right? Christ will use his power to remove living and deceased believers from the last enemy death or attacks. Right? Second, um, or maybe third, I might have my numbers off. It can mean to claim one to, to claim for oneself eagerly. I like that. What is that saying? That Jesus is saying, you're mine. I'm taking you away from any further because I'm getting ready to drop a bomb on, on, on this world. Right? And that's if we believe this, right? Christ purchased us with his blood and he will return and claim those who are his. All right? Another, another uh, uh, view um, to rescue from danger of destruction. In Acts 23 and 10 it says the dispute became so violent, this is Paul, that the commanders was afraid Paul would be torn to pieces by them. He ordered the troops to go down, take him away from them by force and bring him into the barracks. Paul was preaching and was causing a, a ruckus, a riot. That's like having Brother Art up here talking about Jesus is coming back and we might be lost. And everybody goes wild and go, we need to get him out of here. Is he scary? Right? And, 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 and Paul's preaching what the word has said. And I'm, 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 I'm a representation of what the word has said. I'm only giving you what, what God is saying. Right? Um, Harpazo can also mean to snatch away speedily. This meaning supports the idea of the rapture. We'll talk about that. It will save the church from experiencing the terrors of the seven-year tribulation. Now, I'm going to try to try to get you through this as quick as I can. So I'm going to skip through a bunch of it. Um, um, so I already talked about that. I'm going to go into uh, 17. In this, um, in the, the slide on 17, talks about uh, Jesus will return for the saints. If you look at the difference, get you there to slide 17. Sorry, buddy. I don't know if you can see this, but one side talks about what's happening on that side, on the left side of the rapture and the second coming. All right? So um, God appears in the heavens, in this clouds, and he calls us. So what happens is the Lord comes back. When God, he sit, Jesus right now is sitting in the right hand of God. The way it was going to work is God's going to say it's time. And Jesus is going to stand up. And he's going to come down. But only in the sky. We don't know how high it is, but he says we're going to meet him in the clouds, right in the sky, right? It's to say that he comes that far. So he'll come with his angels. And as he says, let's go, he, his archangel is going to blow the horn, make the call, and those that hear him, in order for us to hear him, we have to be what? We have to be in tune. We have to be his. That's the difference. So, what I might hear, if you're not his, you won't hear. You may hear the trumpet, though. doesn't tell us specifically if that's what's going to happen. But that's going to be a scary time for those that have heard this word. Because you're going to know that that's what it's about. Am I, am I, you got more with you? Okay, so that's to deliver us for the church, love and compassion, the bridegroom. All right. Second coming is when he returns back again with us, and we're going to reign with him for a thousand years. That's one of the most important things there, and he and Satan is tied up for a thousand years. Now that's a whole different message there, but I don't want to stay, stay on that. But he comes back as warrior with the church, the wrath and vengeance still, and King of Kings. Now during the tribulation time, I want to make this clear too. When the church is there. The first people that have gone ahead of us that have passed away are going to be, their bodies are in the ground. 
the ones that are drowning in the oceans, in war, and all these all these horrific things have happened. Cremation, right? All the, God says he's coming back for their bodies. It's going to be reunited when he comes back. Those people, their spirits are in heaven right now. Not the heaven heaven where we're all going to be at some point. But it's a holding place where they just still enjoy the presence of the Lord. That's why we say they're asleep. Because it's just the body, the shell. Right? And I don't want him coming back with this body. Right? I, I want that, that, that renewed body. And when he comes back, they're going to rise first. And at the same time, it says in a moment and a twinkling of an eye. How quick is that? Before we, you couldn't bat an eye and be that fast, right? In a moment of took of night, we will be caught up to meet him in the sky. Now, along with them, they'll be first, but just that quick, we're right there. Back to our bodies, renewed. Because we have to have a godly body to be in the presence of God, and he takes us back again. During that tribulation time, those seven years, what do you think is going to happen here? Because it's, it's going to be all over the world. They have to bring structure, right? The Antichrist, you've heard the Antichrist, right? There is what we call the Antichrist spirit as well. That's already here. People that don't believe. People that want to be against what we're saying. You know, I don't want to believe too fully. That's an Antichrist spirit, right? Ask God to search you to make sure. God, give me clarification and understanding. But that's what I always do. During that period of time, someone will come in to create, to call, to create order. So they'll say, hey, we, we, we've had aliens all this time. We just never told you. But we're going to bring structure back. The only ones that, that will know what took place are the ones that have heard this message before. But the Bible talks about There'll be a great, a great walking away, you put it that way. So we easily, I think, example, COVID came. How easily, how easy was it for them to flood our minds with this? That's the first thing. If people are dying, people are dying, we need this. You need to be vaccinated, right? How easy was that to get us all on one accord? And I can tell you, I, I did it because of where I work, and I always had to go, okay, well, I'm here, I'm in healthcare, this is my requirement. I, I didn't want to, and that's just my personal, but they got us on one track mind, and that's all you had. So why would it be harder when the Holy Spirit is not here to stop it? There's a restrainer, and the restrainer is the church. Who is the church? We're the church. We're the church. If we don't understand what this is about, we're going to walk away from here and close these places down. You've heard me say this before. And if we don't have God in our heart, we won't make it. We won't make it. He doesn't have to come back right now. And let's say he doesn't. Let's say he says, I'll come back when, when he says, I'm coming back at the, the mid part of that tribulation. The first part of tribulation is going to be set up like this. The first three and a half years is going to be peace. This is the Bible. I'm giving you what the Bible says. It's not me making this up. I had a dream and I'm giving you a story. It says the first three and a half year, part of the years, there's going to be peace. They're going to create peace. It's going to be one world order. But somebody's going to worship. There's going to be one worship. It won't be our God. But God says this. I'm going to send a remnant down. Well, 144,000 of the, 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 um, the Jewish people will become aware. There will be people that have left that have, have heard the word and now they believe. But it's not going to be that easy. They're not going to be able to run around walking away with Bibles the way it was. You know, some, some movies are, are predicted to uh, do a, a good uh, demonstration of it. But we don't really know what that time is going to be like. And the Bible tells us, what are those that, that are in that time? Because you won't be able to hide like you can at this, at this time. No matter what kind of weapons you have and all the protections that we have. 
We need God. So, those people during that time are going to, going to struggle to, to live for God. And then, right now we freely say, I believe in God. To freely speak. But at that time, you're going to have to make a choice. And how many people can make the choice on their life? On their child's life? If you say you believe in that, you're going to lose your child. Are you willing to lose your child? And we have to make a decision. I, I won't be able to finish this right now. I can tell you right now. But I want you to walk away with this. Thinking about heaven. What's my requirement to be in heaven? What do I need to do in my life? Lord, how do I change me? Because I don't want to be lost. I don't want my children, my spouse, my cousins, my family, my friends. I don't want to be on the drums. Every Sunday is part of a, it's what I do. For something like this to happen. My father always said, and I've shared this numerous times. You don't have to believe it, son. Because I went through that a lot of years ago. I can tell you that. You don't have to believe it. But what happens if when you die and you find out it's true? You can't get a do-over. Chew on it. Ask God for guidance and to speak to your heart. Don't attack the messenger. Pray for me. But I want you to research it for yourself. We got the same word. We can have the, the easiest version, childlike. I like that because I can understand a little bit more. Or you can go to whatever version you think it is. But search the scripture and ask God to show you. Because we have to be ready. No matter what, can we at least agree that we need to be ready? We're not singing these songs for nothing. I'm not. I'm serious about what I when I sing for the Lord. I, I, I you know, I, I think we should be professional. I think we should, but we should also have a heart for what we're doing because that's how we store our treasures in heaven. It's what we present, what we represent, what we give out. We are in this world, but we're not of this world. And there's going to come a time. Believe it or not, it's going to come a time that we have to make a choice. Are you willing to take that chance? Are you afraid of dying? Let's ask that question. That's a, who's afraid? It's okay. I want to help you not be afraid. I want to help you not be afraid. Because I used to be afraid. And I know why I was afraid. I grew up in church. So I did a lot of stuff out there. And I was always afraid that I was going to die and, and, and open my eyes in, in hell. I want to read something and then I'll, I'll be done. It's a scripture. I want to show you something. Since I'm here, I might as well finish it. I'll sneak out the side door. In Luke 16, 19 through 23, I'm going to read this. The rich man and Lazarus. Has anybody heard that story? No, we hear these stories, but is it real to us? There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man who died and was buried in Hades. So when you're not in, in God, you end up in a place. It's not the hell that we, we are aware that we talk about all the time. But it's a form of hell. Hades, 
where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham afar away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, who had many sons, eh? have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. Because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things. While Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you is a great chisel has been set in place. So there's, there's a distance. We can't get to each other because of this separation, right? So that those who want to go from here to you cannot. Nor can anyone cross over from there to us. I'm going to stop with that and think about this. That means if I see my brother across there, it's sad. God's going to wipe away our tears at some point, but there's nothing I can do. Because it's eternal now, right? He answered, then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my family. For I have five brothers, let him warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. So I'm going to stop there and, 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 and try to bring this, wrap this up. When the poor man died, the Bible says that the angels came to take him. Don't be afraid to die. You won't go, you won't go through that long tunnel flying through and looking and going, well, just follow the light, follow the light. The angels will come. And it won't be a scary angel. It won't be an angel that's got a bad attitude. Like, oh, man, I always got to go down. Why couldn't the other one go? It's going to be one that's going to come. And it's going to be time. It's going to be comfort. You're going to find a peace that you never had. We hear these stories about people that have passed and they've seen this and seen that. I don't know what they've seen. I just know what the Bible tells me. He says, if I'm in his, if I'm his, my transition to Christ is going to be wonderful, glorious. The, poor, the rich man, when he died, he just ended up in a place of torment. A place of loneliness. There was even nobody there to talk to. But yet he can see afar the peace that's on the other side. And that's not even the end of his story. He's got to hang out there until after tribulation. After a thousand years, before he's even brought to judgment, to go back to an eternal hell that's worse than that. I can't imagine. And I don't want to take a chance on that. So I choose to follow God and trust God's word. So I, I'm not going to apologize. I want to say I love you. And I, I, I want... I want family, friends, brothers and sisters, our church family, I want us to be in heaven together. We won't have to talk about this stuff when we're there because we, we made it. So this week, ask yourself, are you ready? Okay? Father God, I thank you. Thank you for protecting me and, and keeping my mind in the right state. This has been a heavy message that's been on my heart for, for the last year. And uh, you, you, you said to give it. I don't know who I've touched. I don't know who I've reached. And I, I, I pray that if anyone is offended, Lord, that you find their heart to soften. And I'm willing to talk as much as I can. But I ask that you go with each of us today, Lord, and, 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 and strengthen us through this time. 
Give us the strength that we're not afraid to die because when we leave here, we know we live. We already died when we gave our life to you. Now we're living. And when this shell is gone, Lord Jesus, and I reunite with it again, I know it's going to be at the best. I want that kind of peace with all of our people that are here, Lord Jesus. Let them leave with that. Let them find comfort and joy knowing that our Father is awaiting. Our time is just waiting. It's on Him. But while we're here, we're, we're here for on our assignment. Remind us of our assignment and our purpose, Lord Jesus. Remind us, remind us each and every moment, not just every day, each moment that before we make decisions to stop us. Teach us how to love. Stop us before we respond. Teach us how to pray. Teach us how to talk to you and reach you because you're there. We're knocking. And you said, knock. The door will be open. Ask. You shall receive. Teach us to trust your word, Lord Jesus. Cover us with your precious blood as we return back to our homes, Lord Jesus. And give us the strength to require, that is required for us to love our brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name, amen. Just to add this to Art's message. If there's anybody here right now that says they're ready, but they feel like they haven't done what they feel like they got to do, come and talk to Art. Come and talk to me. And uh, he he wants us. He wants a relationship with us. So go home, pray about it, come and talk to us about it. But he's longing for us, each and every one of us, to be in his family. Amen. I love you, brother. <laughs> I'm going to punch it. <laughs>